guys, it's Dawn and I am back today with another video featuring our Pretty Peonies stamp set. Now this is one of our builder stamp sets, so you stamp several of the images on top of each other to build up an image. But when I was designing this, I also wanted to make sure that you'd be able to watercolor the stamp set as well. I'm always looking for ways to incorporate watercoloring into my stamping and card making, and also looking for ways to make it easier for beginners to achieve similar looks. So that's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna show you how you can achieve some very beautiful watercolor pieces like this and also some looser styles like this one with minimal effort. It will take some practice but I've tried to make it as easy as possible. There's several different ways to achieve this watercolor look with this set. However, for the example shown, I only used the detail image for each of the flowers. You'll also want some water soluble ink. Uh, the Tim Holtz Distress Inks are by far my favorite. I prefer the markers over the pads for this because the pads lay down a little too much color. You'll also need just a little bit of water here. I've put some into a water bottle cap just to demonstrate how little you actually need. And a dry cloth for soaking up any extra water. A dry paper towel or a baby wipe works fine. I'm working on Strathmore 140 pound cold press watercolor paper here and I've just cut it down for demonstration purposes. I do a lot of traditional watercolor as well so it's more economical for me to buy the big old pad of it and then just cut it down when I need it for my cards. But you can buy these in smaller packs. Uh, Tim Holtz makes one and um, it's really great quality as well. So I'm coloring directly onto the stamp using worn lipstick here and then I'm going to stamp that directly onto the uh, watercolor paper. Now this is going to create all of the base color that I need. I'm using a Derwent paintbrush here. This is probably equivalent to about a four inch round. I'm going to pull off the excess water and then I am going to pay attention to the petals. See the way that the direction of the ink is going and that's, that's going to give me a good guide for creating each petal. I'm going to pick up water and then I'm going to start where the ink is laid down. I'm going to start pulling that ink out to what would be the edge of the petal. Again, I'm paying attention to the direction of the petal and I'm gonna pull the water in that direction. I'm always gonna start where the ink is heavy and then pull it out. I'm not gonna worry about trying to cover every single space or spot. I'm gonna leave white areas. These are gonna serve as the breaks in the petals and keep this from looking like one big blob. Again, you can see I am not using a ton of water here. Every so often I'll dip into my water and then start pulling out that color. The more water you use, the less detail you're gonna retain. So if you're going for super photorealistic look, use less water. If you're going for a more loose style, then you'll use more water. And I'll show you that here in a second. Just continue to create each petal by softening out everywhere that we've laid down ink. Again, be sure to pull the ink in the direction that the uh, stamp has guided you in. Anywhere you feel like the ink is still a little too intense, you can just add some more water to soften it out some. Be careful not to over soften it though because you'll start to lose all your definition. If that happens, I'll show you here in a bit a way that you can compensate for that and fix it. So you can see here how quickly this really starts to look like a flower and really the minimal amount of effort that it actually takes. By using the stamp to lay down our color, it's really the hard part is done for us. In watercolor, that's the hardest part for me is to figure out where to lay down that color, where to lay down those, those deepest colors to create the shape. We're going to leave that first one to dry. You can see the white gap in the center there. Um, I'm leaving that to add the stamen in the center of the peony. And now I'm going to show you how to color this other uh, version of the peony here and this one it looks like it's turned up so you'll see less of the center. We're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to apply the uh, ink directly to the stamp, stamp it onto the watercolor paper and then use our water to soften out that ink. You can see here I'm just wiping that excess water off on the back of my hand. That's what happens when I get lazy. But I'm just going to continue to pull this out and create this flower shape. Now the amount of detail that you work into this is really up to you. As you practice and you get more familiar with the way the pigment moves with the water, you get more comfortable with it, you can start experimenting with trying to add more details. Really the only way to mess this up is to add too much water off the bat. Um, you'll lose all of your shape and your form. and um, But it's okay. I'll show you a way to fix this. I actually in my opinion, compared to the other flower. This one was a little too loose, but I'll show you how we can rescue that. We'll come back in in a later layer and uh, fix that. So I'm gonna show you one more time with the medium-sized flower here. Again, we're just gonna ink it up, 
stamp it onto the watercolor paper and then move the ink around in the direction of the petals using that brush and water. Now with these smaller images it is very important to pay attention to the amount of water that you're using because you're working in a tighter space um, the more water you use the further that ink is going to run and then you're going to lose all your separation. You want to make sure you maintain some of that white space. It's again what's going to separate each petal. So now you can really start to see these flowers coming together and how with the help of these stamps you can really create your own little watercolor masterpieces. So these look great just like this and you could stop at this point, add some leaves in your sentiment, you'd be good to go. But I also wanted to show you how, if, well, you know, once you're comfortable, if you wanted to start adding some further detail or you know, just taking it up a notch, I'm going to show you how you could do that as well. So I felt like this top flower in comparison to the other two was a little washed out. There wasn't quite enough, enough depth and color, enough shadow, enough detail. So I'm going to add that back in by just drawing directly onto my watercolor paper with the marker here and then softening that out with my brush. I'm going to try to add the illusion of some more petals. Um, like I said, I felt I, I used too much water, so I lost a lot of my petals. And so I'm going to try to add those back in here. I'm just alternating between laying down a little bit more of that um, worn lipstick and then smoothing it out with the damp brush. So I actually ended up altering the direction that the flower looked like it was facing. So I'm just going to add a few extra petals and I can do that easily by just drawing a petal shape outside of the flower and then connecting it using the water to spread the ink towards the rest of the flower. And I can add another one here at the bottom by doing the exact same thing. So you can continue to just start adding as much detail and definition as you'd like. Um, if you wanted to look more photorealistic, you're going to want to go in and add some more separation between your petals, uh, add some deeper colors, add some shadow colors. And I like to do that by drawing directly onto the watercolor paper at this point and then just using my brush to soften it out. Be careful not to do too much though. Um, you've got a really great balance of um, range and color here from your darkest to your white paper. And if you add too much, you'll start to lose that and it'll become one big muddy mess. So just make sure that, um, make sure to stop yourself, walk away and then come back and look at it and then figure out if you need to add more. It's really easy to get caught up in adding detail um, if you just keep going and going and going. I, I like to take little breaks, um, otherwise I am going to overwork it. So <laughs> I force myself to stop at certain points and walk away and then come back and look at it. Now if you get too much, you can always add water here. Like if I had areas too dark, I just add some water to it, let it set for a couple seconds, and then I use my cloth to just pull it up. To add the centers of the flowers, you'll do the exact same thing. I'm using the center image that's included in the set. I'm using a little spiced marmalade directly to the stamp and then stamping it onto the paper. Now I'm going to take a wet brush and just kind of soften out some of that. I'm not going to run my brush completely over the whole image because I don't want it to turn into just one yellow blob. Um, I'm just dabbing my brush randomly in spots. Then I'm going to ink it up again and stamp the next one. and do the exact same thing. Now if I want to, I can always come back in and add some deeper color later, but I don't want to overwork it at this point. Just get down that initial color first. And here I decided, uh, just add it straight to the paper.
That's another method that you can always do, especially with the centers of flowers. I also wanted to show you how you don't have to add all of that detail. You can do a much looser style. So we'll just stamp it down and we'll use a little bit more water and just pull that color out. And here I'm not even really being overly careful about which way the petals are going. I'm just pulling that water out, just getting that gradual gradation and color going. And I'm making sure to leave some breaks in the uh, color here. So I'm leaving a lot of white space. And then I'm going to force myself to stop and not add any more detail. <laughs> you can use either the solid or the um, outlined images for the leaves. Here I'm going to show you how to do it with the solid. I'm just going to ink it up directly to the stamp. I'm going to wipe away any portion that I don't need and then just stamp it down. And then I'll just use my damp brush to go over that and get that uh, ink moving around and get some variation in the color. You can also just use the outlined images, like here for the stem, I've inked it up in crushed olive. Now I'm just removing any extra ink because I, you know, this is a long stem and I only need it to go so far. And if you get some over an area, I can just add some water immediately to lift up that color and then come and take it away with my paper towel here. And now it's like it never happened. So now I'm just going to take my damp brush and I'm going to blend those two edges of color together. This is going to give me a nice concentration of color on each side and then it's going to gradually fade into the lighter green toward the center and that's going to create that 3D effect. Just like I did with the flowers, I can add detail or deepen any color by adding color directly to the image itself using the marker and then coming in with my brush and softening that out. So now I'm just going to speed things up so you can continue to watch how you can really build these images up. Um, you can create your bouquet using the exact same steps, stamp down your color, then use your water to soften it out. Then you can come in with your markers and go directly to your paper and add in any shadows or any variations of color or any depth. It's really up to you. You can really make these images your own. This is the, the part that I love so much. A lot of the times with stamps, what you see is what you get. Um, by using watercoloring with them, you can get so much more mileage out of each of those images and they become more of your own creation rather than somebody else's creation. So I really think that it's very rewarding to use the watercolor method in with your stamping. It, it just really allows you to stretch your supplies and get a lot of different looks. You can turn these flowers, um, even though I've drawn them to be peonies, you can make them into any flower you want just by modifying the shape by using the water. Um, it's great to mix the colors. You can see in the leaves there, I added some frayed burlap and then I added weather wood to the tips and spread that out. And then I came in and just added a touch of crushed olive to them. And this created a great, more realistic um, variation in color, something that you would more naturally find in nature. So it's really up to you. The possibilities are endless. Here you can see I didn't even stamp the whole image, um, but by using that water with the brush, I can pull it back to the base of the flower and then just add a little bit more color directly to the cardstock and spread that out and yeah you'll never know that I didn't actually stamp the whole image. And on a side note you must forgive this composition this is was never intended to be a finished piece and uh, it's I don't know what I was thinking it, it just doesn't work in the end, but it's a great example of how to put together a bouquet, how to combine your colors, how to uh, bring these images to life. See, you can see here I'm trying to decide, like, can I stamp this somewhere and even try to save this and make it something usable in the end? And in the end, um, I just I wasn't happy with the way the flowers were arranged, but hey, that's okay because I got a lot of practice and I learned some new techniques for using with these images. So don't be afraid to play and experiment. It's, um, it's a lot of fun and you'll never learn if you don't just try. And remember, this is just one of the ways that you could incorporate watercolor into the set. If you're not comfortable with this amount of detail yet or if it's just not your style, you can also use just the outlined images. Just stamp the outlined images onto your watercolor paper and then fill them using a simple watercolor wash. It has a very stylistic look and it looks absolutely amazing. So I'm just going to leave you with a couple of parting shots of some projects that I created using this exact same technique. 
So in this first example, all I did was stamp out the image and then soften it with the water. I didn't add any extra detail, and I love how free-formed and loose this is. But in the second one, I stamped the image, softened it with water, and then came in and added extra depth and dimension using the marker directly to the paper, just like I showed you in the video. So you can see here that the amount of detail that you put into it is really up to you, and the results are just as beautiful either way. So I really hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you learned something new. Don't forget, you can find all the featured W Plus 9 supplies at wplus9.com. You can find more information on this project, more photos, and other projects at our blog at stampawaywithme.blogspot.com. You can connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I will see you next time. Bye.